So my name is David Barshad. I'm from the University of Toronto. And my, uh, the title of my presentation is a little bit of a mouthful, but the, the two layers are the low temperature ozone native oxide and a silicon nitride bilayer, and it's for passivating silicon. Um, so the basic structure, as you can see there, it's not to scale, obviously, but um, the approximate uh, thickness of the ozone is uh, like 1.3 or less nanometers, and the nitride is about 76 or less nanometers. Um, so the, the, the basic idea behind this is that passivation is very important to, uh, for solar cell performance, but substrates have become thinner over time, and, and you know, they went from 500 microns to 400, and now they're trying to go down to 100. And as these uh, substrates get thinner, um, thermal processes for passivation um, become an issue because you have, uh, uh, you have, like, uh, for example, uh, thermal oxide passivation. The high temperature uh, nature of the passivation leads to dopant and bulk defect uh, diffusion and thermal stresses in the substrate, which become more of a problem as the substrate gets thinner. So we are working on a low temperature uh, surface passivation technique for silicon, and that's the additional benefit of allowing materials that are typically, um, you can't put into a, uh, a furnace for silicon oxide to be able to be used in the uh, cell. So this work uh, was based off of Zahid's uh, work. He was working with uh, silicon nitride, and he had found that if you just let the samples sit out, that, that the lifetime of the samples were improved. Um, and he found, so he parameterized it, and he found the best passivation occurs after approximately a month of growth, which is about 1.3 nanometers. You know, the difficulty with using this process on a larger scale or for, for really anything is that you can't let it, you know, the sample sit around for a month. So we, we were thinking, well, how can we adapt this technique in order to uh, grow the oxide more quickly? And um, this is how we do it. And uh, this is, uh, I've taken this from a paper. Um, you can see the beige, this the uh, the beige uh, atoms are silicon, the red are oxygen, and the white are hydrogen. And how ozone this is a low temperature interaction. How ozone reacts with the the, the hydrogen terminated silicon surface is it 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 takes it reacts with the hydrogen, and then it breaks down into a hydroxyl group on the silicon, and it and the O2 goes away. And uh, so, so it forms a, a OH3, a HO3 radical and breaks down. Um, and then as, as, uh, the, as it progresses, the O3 molecule hits the surface of the silicon oxide and the um, oxygen atom breaks off and goes to the surface and the O2 goes away. And w we thought we'd use this process. It's very low, um, low purity or low concentration ozone to uh, develop this oxide layer. And so uh, you can see in this diagram, um, the other material we use is silicon nitride. This is a band diagram. Uh, it's non stoichiometric because it's rich in uh, hydrogen. And it's uh, amorphous, which, as you all know, is good for encapsulation because there's no grain boundaries. Additionally, it's good as an anti reflective coating. And, um, oops. And uh, so the two way that this process passivates silicon is, uh, is over here. And you can see positive fixed charge near the interface on the nitride side forces the, uh, we do it on end type, so it's, it's positive fixed charge, forces away the, uh, the holes from the surface. And additionally, the hydrogen permeates into the silicon and uh, fills those trap states near the interface. Um, our process, uh, the beauty of it is very simple. It's, uh, we take a crystalline silicon substrate, polish and as received. We etch the, uh, the vestigial native oxide off with hydrofluoric acid. Then we put it into a uh, custom built uh, low concentration ozone generator that, 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 uh, that works B through BDO. And then we PCBD on the, uh, the silicon nitride over top. And it reacts with the, uh, the, the silicon oxide to form a silicon oxynitride layer, which is, which is where all the 
passivation occurs. Um, so now I'm going to show you, so you have a basic understanding of, of what the structure is and, and how we got to it. And I'm going to show you increasingly complex measurements of, of how process parameters have affected the, uh, the production of this material. So this, one's the, this is the straight, most straightforward one possible. It's uh, how the nitride grows with time. It's linear, not much to see there. Um, so then we look at the, uh, the nitride thickness versus lifetime. And as you can see, as, it, as you increase the thickness, it starts to saturate. And we found that um, once you go to uh, about 76 nanometers, oh, sorry, that should be angstroms, but 76 nanometers, um, the, the lifetime begins to saturate and, and there's diminishing returns. Um, so then, then we, we start varying, the, we took the uh, nitride and we said 76 nanometers. Okay, now let's vary the oxide thickness. And we did that through changing the times of the ozone uh, preparation. And uh, we got it to go anywhere from one nanometer to 1.3, depending on the time. This was about 15 minutes. This is about an hour or two. Um, and then it saturates. You can't go past about 1.4 nanometers with the ozone system. So we heated the substrates, and we immediately found that the lifetime drops off. So we have a partner over at uh, University of Western Ontario, and we can do um, medium energy ion spectroscopy. We can do Rutherford backscattering analysis and elastic recoil detection analysis. And uh, these techniques together let us do some more interesting things with our material as a fundamental material study. And this, uh, so the two curves that are, that, are, that are interesting here is the with an increase of the thickness of the silicon nitride, there's a decrease in the uh, thickness of the silicon hydride layer behind the interface. This, this is measuring the hydrogen that's on in the silicon side of the interface. So you can see um, you get a thinner layer of hydrogen past the interface. Um, so then we, now we look at the hydrogen density inside the, on either side of the interface. So there's not um, there's a general correlation here where it generally increases um, the amount of hydrogen in the silicon nitride film as you increase the thickness. I'll plenty more data, more data points for this. But the interesting thing is um, when you're when you're looking on the other side of the interface with with ERD, you find that as you go for a thicker nitride, um, you uh, get a thinner layer of uh, of uh, of silicon hydride, but it's more dense, and this has led us to this is uh, getting closer to a direct measurement of the role of hydrogen in passivation of the silicon. So we took it to the next step, and we used our photoconductive uh, results through Sintin, and we uh, put modeled it to see the influence of fixed positive charge and the role of the passivation of interface states. So. Um, the top one, uh, sorry, the, these here represent, as you can see, NS, these, these are the, the interface states, and these are the, uh, the fixed positive charge at the interface. So what you can see first is that when you heat the substrate, not, you lose your, your positive fixed charge at the interface, and you also lose your, your passivation. So it's not terribly interesting. But um, with an increase in oxide thickness, the interesting part is that um, the, the fixed oxide charge stays the same, but it's the decrease, it's, a, it's, the, uh, it's the decrease in interface states that leads to the improvements in lifetime. So uh, that again, uh, and, and as you, and which is interesting, and then um, with the, the nitride thickness, you can see that um, the decrease, so this, the, the the oxide, fixed oxide, the fixed charge near the interface decreases, as does uh, the surface states. But because of the general increase in lifetime, that the effects of the uh, passivation outweigh the effects of the oxide charge, which again uh, su supports our conclusion that, that the hydrogen is working at the interface to passivate the bonds. Um, so, in conclusion, uh, the we this is from the data so far we can say that thermally grown uh, thick oxide samples just lead to poor lifetime. It, it's not a path we're going to continue down. Um, silicon nitride, uh, the, the, the lifetime improved to uh, 76 nanometers. 
um, we managed to get similar results to what Zahid had achieved with his process. Therefore, you know, taking the the, the processing time from from by down by two orders of magnitude, which was good. And we're getting closer to, to direct measurements of the effect of increasing hydrogen concentration for better passivation of the samples, and we can and we can and which I feel is really interesting because I haven't seen many um, uh, papers out there that can actually directly measure the, the hydrogen near the interface and how it changes with a change in uh, the uh, parameter. Um, so the next steps in the project are uh, we're going to adapt the um, this process to work with uh, silicon 111, which should be fairly uh, straightforward, and polycrystalline substrates. And that that's going to be more difficult because we, we want to have a process that can passivate the cracks in the yield. Um, currently, I'm working on doing capacitance voltage measurements um, to to better uh, to directly measure interfacial properties. Um, uh, one of our more ambitious projects is to uh, thin and eventually remove the silicon nitride layer and bring it down to a one nanometer structure. And we're going to do that, and we're also going to do the polycrystalline, hopefully through um, annealing and 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 either with ammonia or hydrogen, and try to. Uh, Process just the the oxide, or, or, or try to process into the cracks. Um, I'd like to thank uh, NSERC and the, the the PVIN for funding, and uh, our partners at Western, and you for uh, listening to my presentation. So we re sorry I, I I had a limited amount of time to present my material and the, the manufacture the uh, fabrication process for the PCVD silicon nitride is reacting uh, silane with ammonia and in that process everything has many like, like silane has four extra hydrogen and the ammonia has what like nine or seven and that all of that ammonia all of that hydrogen diffuses into it it's it's, it's, a, it's that reaction which is why we think you can maybe take up a nitride. And just use a hydrogen plasma or an or ammonia plasma to process these wafers. So, a related question: What, what happens if you don't put on the silicon nitride? You just use your ozone treatment instead of what kind of you get? Um, the issue with that is that it's, it doesn't encapsulate it. So, our our lifetime mes uh, testing methods um, would we can't do it in situ. So, we put it on the slide, and then immediately it's just contaminated. But we haven't we haven't had um, success so far with just the the ozone preparation. Did you compare your approach with Abacus silicon? Are you Yes, we have. Um, so uh, we're not quite at that. Um, the, the the amorphous silicon um, has advantages over ours of a higher lifetime, but has it also has disadvantages like a leakage current and and other. Problem. So, so it's, it's for a different application, I, I feel, because yeah, much of that answers your question. So, what is the modulation that we are using that and silicon oxide and silicon nitride is double layer distribution? Um, so the the, the the idea behind it is to uh, is because it, it it can the silicon nitride is an insulator and it, you can encapsulate the material with it um, and the idea is, is is to do better with than just silicon nitride it's like a it's equivalent to like a wet treatment to the uh, silicon the end goal of this though this is we have, we're, we have large ambitions on this project is to uh, take out the nitride. Process the silicon, the ox silicon oxide as is, and then we put an active layer on it, like um, maybe even amorphous si uh, silicon that's been doped, and and go down that path and try to try to just make it thin and, and lean. We, an active layer would be where we'd go with it. Something where, where you can build the, the device right into the encapsulation layer. It's like doped amorphous silicon. We have a, we have a technique, which is a grid. Um, Pratish was working on this 
Uh, it's like a, like a grid uh, based PCBD where it's indirect. And then we can uh, hopefully bring that into this also and then build cells with, with even better passivation. Okay, we thank you.